This morning we are talking about New York State politics with someone who once was top of that very game, former Governor David Patterson. Patterson served as governor from 2008 to 2010. He took over when Governor Elliot Spitzer resigned, and he served during some of the hardest financial times in the United States and brought many spending cuts to the state, earning him support from across the aisle. He launched a campaign for governor in 2010, but ultimately dropped out of that race, paving the way for Andrew Cuomo. And this morning, former New York Governor David Patterson goes on the record. Patterson is with me now. So great to have you here on Picks and Politics for your first appearance, sir. Thank you, Dan. It's great to be here. So, so Governor, I want to talk first and foremost, we'll get to the budget in a second. I want to talk about subway crime for a moment, right? There's long been this idea that the subways are controlled by New York City, but it's really controlled by the state because the MTA is under the state's control, right? So this is back and forth about who controls it, who's responsible for it, and this perception of crime that is happening in the subways. What, when you were governor, how did you say that play out? Well, as you just said, there are 462, give or take a few, uh, subway stations in New York City. There are 6,500 subway trains, and 3 million people traverse back and forth in this area every day. So the management is very critical. Yeah. Uh, the MTA is the manager. I was on the MTA board. Mm -hmm. We made the, the difficult decisions, but what we had uh, was kind of anonymity. You know, you're on the MTA board, maybe your family knows. But in the case of the riders, who is the person they're most familiar with? The mayor. Mm -hmm. So whatever goes, you know, right or wrong, up or down, it's going to be on the mayor. When you look at this, Governor, would you have sent the National Guard in the way that Governor Hochul did? If you'd asked me that question two weeks ago, I would have said no. Because it takes a long time to train police officers. Seven months to eight months, you know, in the, in the police academy. And it's very difficult work. And that moment of when to draw your weapon and when not to, they go over that time and time again to try to make sure that the police officers uh, have mm -hmm. the arms to protect themselves, but at the same time have the judgment to know when to use it. Problem is, um, because of the fear factor, mm -hmm. which is much greater than the statistical number of crimes are being committed yeah. in the subway. That number is actually very low. But, you know, you have a situation where a man gets on a train, starts beating up another man, then takes his gun out. Yeah. Then the other man gets the gun away from him and kills him, right. which he should have done. But the fact is that um, that just sends a chill through everyone's uh, bones. I've been riding the subways in, in uh, New York City since I was 17. And when I heard that story, I was shaken well, up. Well, yeah, I mean, Governor, seven, uh, an average of six felonies in the subways for the year out of four million robberies, I mean, four, four million riders. So the stats are, like you said, for pretty much low. That is what the mayor says right. each and every day. But now the mayor has kind of pivoted not only to subway crime, but overall this idea of recidivism, about bail reform needing to be looked at. And he's talking about how a lot of these suspects are repeat offenders and that the laws need to change and the system needs to change. You were once up there in Albany. What's going on in terms of the laws? Well, d uh, just to conclude, the issue with uh, the Marines is that they will be operating under the aegis of the police department. Mm. They won't be out front. And sometimes if they just have uniforms on, that's a deterrent itself. Yeah. So they may just be using them uh, to you know, just make people feel a little safer. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of what the mayor's talking about, I think the mayor has allowed himself to be educated in public. Mm. In other words, since he's become mayor, he looks at the world a lot differently than he probably did beforehand. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's talking about the recidivism. That's why he's talking about longer sentences for people who uh, assault, um, uh, you know, workers in these stores and yeah. drug stores and these... Uh, uh, delicatessens it's going on all over the city and he is emerging I think as a very honest person in in the uh, in, compared to everything else that's going on but for some reason the public has not embraced mm -hmm. his points of view and I don't really understand that he says what I think everyone else feels in terms of bail reform and recidivists and things needing to change in, in terms of the statistics of the statistics yeah. But when you see these headlines of these incredible crimes and these uh, now they've got this um, thing going on where they're punching people, you know, at random yeah. for no reason. Gangs are doing this. When that happens, uh, you would have to be in an igloo in Alaska 
not to be fearful of your own um, right. movement in the city. So, Governor, bail reform held up the budget a couple years ago, right? It was a big topic. It all starts in, with laws changing in Albany and with the governor. Do you think it's been handled appropriately? Would you have handled it differently in terms of bail reform, tweaking it to get after some of the things that the mayor is talking about? Well, I think that they've tried. I think one of the things that people tend to do with bail reform is they compare the bail to the criminal allegation. So, for instance, uh, uh, well, he was a accused of, uh, of uh, shooting someone. Mm. But bail, under our United States Constitution, uh, basically just is there to make sure that the defendant is available for a trial. Mm. It's to bring the defendant in to the trial. Now, in a lot of cases, you can release someone in their own recognizance because it's not in their interest to run away. Uh, I think what, ha what has been discussed is where people have had several prior arrests and convictions, and now we're going to give them bail, the chance for them to just not show up at so the it's trial a, it's is, a, it's a change. Is, is greater. And so I think there is a movement to try, perhaps, and um, restrict the movements mm -hmm. of people who have uh, previous records, yeah. not previous accusations, but actual convictions. All right, let's talk about the, the, the budget, because that is a big thing. There's a lot of closed-door meetings that happen, right? So how does the sausage get made? What is happening in those clo closed-door meetings? Let's take a topic, for example, of mayoral control. That is a big hot-button issue this year. The mayor wants it. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. What's happening behind closed doors? For some reason that I don't really understand, and I'm not being critical here, I just don't understand, the legislature does not want the mayor to have the mayoral control that Mayor Bloomberg had, um, and uh, or that Mayor de Blasio had. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's beyond me. I, I, you know, you don't know the answer to every question, and I don't know the answer to that one. But what I would say is that uh, Mayor Adams' pursuit of it has been very strong, and some of the proposals that he's made for change are very thoughtful. And it, you know, as I see it, particularly uh, in the school system, one of our biggest problems, Dan, is that we're still managing our uh, Board of Education in New York City mm. from the agrarian calendar of 1880, mm. meaning that the kids get out of school at 132, 230 in the afternoon. Yeah. And back in 1880, they went out to like work on the farms. Now they're going home. Presumably both parents are working or maybe there's a single parent and that parent is working. And so for all that time when they're say 11 or 12, maybe they don't do their homework and eat too much candy. Hmm. When they're 13, 14 and 15, there are a whole lot of other things. <laughs> and all of those indicators from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. are that the absence of any supervision yeah. is there. So what, in some respects, what Mayor, Mayor Adams is talking about is keeping the younger people around the school mm -hmm. even after the school day yeah. is over. And remember, the original schools in this country were not for education. They were custodial because the rest of the families were were right, working, right, right. and they needed someone to watch after the kids. So that's the talk of... So you obviously support mayoral control. i got to get you on this last topic because we're out of time. Uh, on the topic of elections, there's a lot going on, a lot of rumors that go out, right? Former Governor Andrew Cuomo, there's rumor that he might be mulling in office a run for mayor. Do you think he should run? I think um, that uh, he served very well as a governor, mm -hmm. and uh, he was never... He was accused of things, but he was never convicted mm -hmm. of anything in that respect. So I think he could run for mayor. But I had lunch with him recently, and I said to him, if I ever came back, I'd never run for mayor. I would run for governor, because when you're the governor, you're up in Albany. They have this mm -hmm. great mansion, but no one knows where it is. <laughs> and you, you, when you want to speak, you can speak. When you don't want to be bothered, you have that right. alternative. When you are mayor of the city, the press lives in Gracie Mansion. Yes. You have absolutely no time to yourself or, 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 or anyone else. So if he wants to rave, run for mayor, um, I think he'll reconsider that. Okay. Would you <laughs> ever run again? No. For anything? No, not in the least bit. No interest. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I do miss some of the times when I see something and I, I thought, you know, if I was there, I would do this yeah. or I would do that. Um, but I think that um, too often what happens with people in public office 
is it becomes their business. Mm. Public office is not supposed to be your business, it's the public's well, yeah. business. So the things I try to do now are either, you know, privately or just uh, at times making myself available well. to try to help people since I, you know, once managed the system so I can be of help to people when they need it. And I do appreciate you making the time for us today. Former Governor David Patterson, your sure, analysis. I appreciate it. it. Welcome back. You're welcome, welcome back anytime, sir. Thank you. Uh,